As a 3D artist, you will have to use different methods of modeling depending on the kind of result you want to achieve and the nature of your project. This video is a good foundation for beginners when it comes to the types of 3D modeling. But if you have been around the block for a while, I believe this will clarify a few things that you need to know or those things that you already know. We're gonna start with polygonal modeling, which is probably the most commonly used in different fields, especially entertainment industries such as game development, VFX and such. This is the case because this method involves manipulating polygons, edges and vertices to create different types of assets. Assets such as environment props, vehicles and characters to a certain extent. The types of 3D software that are designed for this type of modeling are software such as Blender, Max, Maya, Cinema 4D and so on. So if you are new to 3D or if you have been using 3D software for a while, this is what you will be using for the most part because it is just more convenient for most of the work that artists do, also it gives you control that you will need to get the job done. But we are just getting started, because we also have box modeling. As the name suggests, this method of modeling relies upon modifying primitive geometry to start crafting your 3D assets. After creating the basic geometry, you will start adding details by slicing into pieces and extending the faces of the cubes, cylinders, pyramids or whatever to gradually start shaping and creating the asset you have in mind. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this method other than using it as a stepping stone for creating 3D assets but not further than that. The logic behind this is that it is hard to model accurately and it can be annoying once things get complicated. For the most part, you can use it to create simple things like tables, simple buildings or low poly characters on the fly. It can also serve as a starting point for the process of sculpting, which is one of the types of modeling that we will talk about in a couple of minutes. Next we have spline or nerves modeling. Spline modeling is the process of creating surfaces of geometry using splines as a foundation. The most commonly used splines in 3D are Bezier curves and nerves. You will be surprised to know that this method of modeling is one of the oldest. So, as we said, it relies on creating curves and nerves and then creating bridges of polygons that we call patches. This method of modeling is most optimal for industrial design like creating cars, airplanes or basically 3D modeling that has smooth and organic surfaces. Now we're gonna discuss Boolean modeling. This is a very unique type of modeling that has no other alternative that can replace it or at least be as effective as it is. It can be confused with box modeling, but it is different because box modeling can be very lacking when it comes to adding or subtracting geometry from other objects or models. If you are using the right 3D software or add-ons, this method can save you a lot of time and hassle because as I said, adding or subtracting geometry in a way that leaves you with a good topology is very important. For example, if you try subtracting a hemisphere from a cube, good luck doing that with poly modeling or box modeling or any other type of modeling for that matter. Boolean modeling, in addition to hard surface sculpting, is the only effective method of creating hard surface models like robots, complex machinery, or anything that falls under what we call hard surface modeling. It is used a lot, especially in industrial design and engineering fields, because they have to create super complex models like engines and other mechanical tools, and this work requires this method to get the job done on time. Game developers and VFX artists also rely on this method of modeling to create cool looking hard surface models and assets such as robots, complex vehicles and spaceships, weapons and so on. Now we're gonna talk about 3D sculpting. It can actually be considered a field on its own, but for the sake of this topic, we're gonna add it here to help you understand if you are a beginner or just new to 3D. Just like clay sculpting, 3D digital sculpting relies on morphing geometry to create 3D assets you need. It can be similar to a certain extent to other forms of modeling like box modeling. But the most important difference is that 3D sculpting allows you to work with super high resolution models. I mean dealing with millions or tens of millions of vertices in one project. Also it allows you to create a ton of details that are just impossible to create using other forms of modeling. One of the popular software for 3D sculpting is ZBrush, which is the industry standard in game development and VFX projects. But you can also use Blender if you want to start somewhere for free. But I would say for most cases, Blender is gonna be enough. We also have parametric modeling. And as the name suggests, it deals with parameters that come with software and modeling tools. One clear example is using 3D modifiers that come for example with Blender or Max, 
you can use the form bevel, array, or mirror modifiers to quickly use their parameters to get things done on the fly without having to do the work manually yourself. And this will save you a lot of time and effort down the road. Now we're gonna talk about procedural modeling, which is a very interesting method of creating certain things, such as different environments like urban city assets, and this includes buildings with different elements like windows, doors, balconies, and so on. Game developers also use this type of modeling to quickly populate natural environments like forests. Usually, procedural modeling involves using tools that allow you to automatically create objects super fast, and you can control what you are creating using certain parameters. There is also procedural modeling that is related to shading. This basically means procedurally creating complex surfaces based on simple geometric shapes using displacement. Kit bashing is also a very unique method of modeling that is usually used by professionals to create complex designs. But the thing is, it is not as complicated as it seems. It is used by someone who understands what they need while having a certain workflow to follow. It is especially important when creating complex hard surface models or projects such as robots, complex ships, and so on. I remember the first time I was introduced to this method, and this was in the early 2010s, when I saw a modeling artist creating Autobots from the movie Transformers. So to create insane details that a Transformer has, they have to use pre-existing mechanical pieces to fill different sections. At first, it seems so amazingly complex, but with a closer inspection, you will realize that this complex machine is just a simpler and smaller hard surface elements. So depending on what you want to do as an artist, whether you are a game developer, a VFX artist, an archivist artist, an industrial designer, or anything else, you will need different types and methods of modeling to finish your projects. But you will most likely use a combination of these methods for one project. But the sure thing is, you will use some more than others. So keep this in mind when working on your personal projects, because following the right method of modeling can save you a lot of time and effort, like using bully modeling and kit bashing to create complex hard surface models instead of using polygonal or box modeling as an example. This video is brought to you by Mark Kingsnorth, a Blender developer with 20 years of software development experience. He has been working on cool Blender add-ons for modeling like Conform Object, which is a popular add-on for projecting any object on other objects, models, or surfaces very quickly and efficiently. There is also Perspective Plotter, which is a useful add-on for creating 3D models from 2D sketches, matching a 3D scene to a 2D photo, or animating a camera dynamically. It also allows you to define lines in the viewport and sets the camera's focal length, location, and position in real time. Another cool add-on from Mark is Plating Generator, which is great for 3D modelers and concept artists, because it adds paneling patterns and maps to multiple objects on a flat or curved mesh, in addition to a lot of features as well. If you are interested in these add-ons and more, you will find the necessary links in the description. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.